So basically, Brandon Graham said about the quarterback situation, it's never 100%, especially with Howie. So, the player, we know the players aren't dumb. These are, these are grown men. They're smart. They know, just like we know, like, you know, how Howie can be volatile sometimes. The players know that, he, and they know going into the draft, we have three first-round picks. So, the players see that there's a scenario where Jalen Hurst might not be the starter in 2022. Yeah. What's up? What's happening? What's popping? What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another great episode of Smo with the Spizzards. I'm Smo, I'm bringing you guys daily sports talk. So if you're new here, if you're older here and you haven't already subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you start what you're doing. Leave a comment, subscribe, keep rocking with me. Also, make sure you check out my links down below. The first link is to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel. The second link is to shop the official Smo with the Sports merch collection. Get you the classic tea, the wavy tea, the Jaylee Making Hurts tea, or the brand new Fly or Die tea crew neck that I've been rocking lately. This crew neck comes in green, black, and white. And I also have a mug and Fly or Die stickers. So go ahead and shop that. Lastly, guys, turn your notification bells on because you already know the video are coming live. Boom, 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 boom. And you don't want to miss a single video or a single live stream. But guys, let's get right into it. <laughs> let's get right into it. So I had a different video planned for today, but you know, plans are just plans because some G is always popping up. So today it has been confirmed that Jalen Hurts is getting surgery on his ankle. So we know Jalen Hurts has been playing hurt with a hurt ankle for a while. So um, the game before the Jets, um, he hurt his ankle. Then he sat out against the Jets. Gardner Minshew came in against the, the, the Jets. Um, the team said before Gardner Minshew came in that Jalen Hurts was going to be the quarterback regardless of how Gardner Minshew performed. Gar Gardner Minshew balled out against the Jets and the Eagles, Nick Sirianni, Howie Roseman, front office, coaching staff, stayed true to their word. Even though a lot of y'all was calling for Minshew to come back out they still, um, it was the Giants we played before the Jets. So, yeah, he, the Giants where he played an extremely bad game. Um, then he didn't play against the Jets. Then we went into the bye week. So, it was a lot of time and a lot of time for, like, the coaches and the fans to be thinking of what should happen. But, like I said, they stuck true to their word. After the bye, Jalen Hurts came back out, played after 23 days, played. He played three more games, and then he played in the playoffs we know with a hobbled ankle. So he's now getting his surgery. They're saying that he should be ready to go come April. So it's February, March, April. So that's two months of recovery. Um, so whatever kind of ankle injury he has is not um, going to be, has, it does not have a long recovery time because he's going to be back by April and that's before the draft. So that does give the Eagles plenty of time to evaluate him before the draft and seeing, you know, <laughs> what we need to do. Now, I have no doubt in my mind that Jalen will have a full recovery from the ankle because whatever the injury is, he was able to play and he was able to, like, put weight on the ankle. I feel like that's the biggest thing. Like, can you put weight on your injury? And he played four games um, on that ankle. We know he played really – he didn't – well, he didn't play in the um, Dallas Cowboys game. But I think it was still three games between then. But anyways – we know that Jalen Hurst is going to be fine from this ankle surgery. A lot of people on Twitter trying to come up with some fake drama, trying to say, uh-oh, Gardner Minshew time, uh-oh, Kenny Pickett time, or Russell Wilson. I'm seeing a lot of Eagles Russell Wilson talk on the Twitter. Um, like I said, do I think Jalen Hurst needs to do a lot to improve? Yes, he does. He, he has a lot of room for improvement, but... Meryl Reese made a good point and a great point and a point that I've been trying to make, but maybe y'all listen to Meryl if you don't listen to Moan. You know what I'm saying? Jalen has all the intangibles he needs to develop. One, he has a will to get better. A lot of people, not everybody has a will and a dedication to get better. And not everybody has the, 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 the humiliation factor like 
willing to accept that, yeah, I have a lot of work to do. Some people are in denial. Jalen is not in denial. He's saying a thousand times he has a lot of work to do, and he's willing to do that work, and he's going to get started. And him going ahead and getting this ankle surgery just proves that, not waiting to get the ankle surgery, going ahead and pulling the trigger so he can start his recovery process. Two, he has the backing of his teammates. His teammates back him um, a thousand percent. So he has the support from his teammates. He realizes what he needs to do. He's 23 years old. He's still young and has plenty of time. So it's plenty of time even this offseason. Like I said, this is the first offseason Jalen Hurts is going to go. This is the first time in Jalen Hurts um, pretty much since college where he's going to go. I don't know what his high school makeup was. I don't know what the high school was. But this will be his first time going into um, a consecutive season with the same offensive play caller. So that continuity, that familiarity, that trust that he's built um, with the offensive coaching staff is going to help him develop this offseason. And a lot of you guys say y'all want Jalen Hurst to get a quarterback coach, and maybe they will. But, y'all, so we still got to talk about this one main. um, But, like I said, did that Russell Wilson, did it, did it, did the Russell Wilson boo, like, I highly doubt Russell Wilson wants to come to the Eagles right now. Why would he, if Russell Wilson, I feel like a player of Russell Wilson's caliber and of his resume will want to go to a team like that's built to win now. Like how Matt Stafford went and plugged and played right to the Rams. I feel like Russell Wilson, if he moves on from the Seahawks, he will want to move on to a championship ready team, a team that just needs a quarterback to plug in and ready to go to the Super Bowl, okay? So I don't, I highly doubt that Russell Wilson wants to come to Philly. You know what I'm saying? So, and these guys, when you trading for somebody like Russell Wilson, they're not trading Russell Wilson unless he wants to leave, unless he's going to where he wants to go. He, he's built up enough cachet and enough power to not just, he's not no... Um, Jay Larenga, who just going to get, he don't got no say in what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we trading you to the Browns, or we trading you to the Falcons. He ain't Calvin really who don't have a say in where he go. Russell Wilson is going to have a say in all of that. GE. So unless he personally is saying, I want to go to the Philadelphia Eagles, he's not coming, y'all. We can't just, it's not Calvin really where we can just, will to the Eagles. You know what I'm saying? Russ has to want to come here. But y'all, now there is a little piece of piece of something that I do have to address. Now, Brandon Graham was on the radio, 94 WIP, WIP, whatever you call it. If I was in Philly, I'd be calling it the WIP. I don't know if that's what y'all call it, because obviously I don't live in Philly. But y'all know the Eagles flagship station Brandon Ingram, I said Brandon Ingram, Brandon Graham was on the radio station the other day and he was asked, of course, about the quarterback situation. We starting that she back up asking every player about our quarterback situation. Didn't that get us in trouble with Carson Wentz? Huh? Why are we doing that he again? You know what I'm saying? So, of course, they asked Brandon Graham about our quarterback situation. And Brandon Graham did say this, y'all, just a little nugget. Now, I know Howie Roseman said, and like the end of the season press conference, wrapping the season up, all that G, Howie Roseman said that Jalen Hurst is their guy. Jalen Hurst is the guy going in 2022. Jalen Hurst is the guy going in 2022. Something like that. Jalen Hurts, Nick Sirianni said he's the guy going in 2022. Well, we're in 2022, so they already fulfilled that statement that they said. You know what I'm saying? Look, y'all, my mama a lawyer, and when you got people worst, I'm not saying Howie Roseman is lying about Jalen Hurts being the starter, but there are ways to say stuff that he said he's going to be the guy going in 2022 or he's going to be the starter going into 2022, but a lot can change in 2022, the draft free agency. So that doesn't, I agree. Like y'all saying in the comments, that doesn't a thousand percent mean Jalen Hurts is going to be the Philadelphia Eagles starting quarterback 
week one of the 2022 season. Now, if Howie Roseman said that, then yes. But they say he's going to be the guy going into 2022. Going into 2022. Not finishing 2022. Not August, September 2022. Going into 2022. So basically, Brandon Graham said about the quarterback situation, it's never 100%, especially with Howie. So the play, we know the players aren't dumb. These are, these are grown men. They're smart. They know, just like we know, like, you know, how Howie can be volatile sometimes. The players know that, he, and they know going into the draft, we have three first-round picks. So the players see that there's a scenario where Jalen Hurst might not be the starter in 2022. Brandon Graham, leader on this team, said it's never 100%, especially with Howie. So, y'all, all I can say is, and y'all know I'm someone who's continuously backed up Jalen Hurts a thousand percent. But at the end of the day, we know our loyalty is to that Kelly Green, baby. Fly a yeah, like the shirt say. So, shoot. Who knows, y'all? This offseason, especially with the surgery. Now, if this was any other quarterback situation, if this was any other situation and a quarterback was getting ankle surgery that's going to take them a month to recover, that would not be any, like, sound the alarms. It's only because of the uncertainty around Jalen Hurts and Brother Man getting surgery. That's just not an ideal situation for a quarterback whose um, who's, who's, um, spot isn't secure. So, especially going into a draft where the players want Kenny Pickett, he's from Philadelphia, well, he's from Pennsylvania, y'all want Kenny Pickett, there's a Malik Willis shooting at the board, we got three first round picks, Russell could want to trade Aaron Rodgers. It's just not a good situation because we have so much draft capital, which then turns into trade assets. There's quarterbacks in limbo. And we have all this free agency money. So, like I said, as of right now, Jalen Hurst is still our starting quarterback. We haven't, the front office hasn't shown anything to make us believe otherwise. Whether the players are still questioning it, whether the fans are still questioning it, as of right now, Howie is still true to his word that Jalen Hurst is the quarterback in 2022. So, we'll see what happens next. Okay. Okay. Okay, but guys, make sure you leave a comment, subscribe, keep rocking with me. Um, actually, I did want to say this, and I'm only saying this at the end of the video because only my real ones would have made it this far in the video. So, <clears throat> all the fake fans don't already left my video probably five minutes ago. So, I'm going to leave this nugget for the, for the real ones, and I like it. So, y'all, I'm not going to lie. And when I'm talking to y'all, I'm talking, y'all my people. I'm just getting my thoughts out. This doesn't necessarily mean I'm just like just venting, basically. So Jimmy Garoppolo watching that game with the San Francisco 49ers against the Rams. Jimmy Garoppolo did have me a little bit like, dang, you see what a regular ad quarterback will do? Like a regular ad quarterback will waste. I believe the Niners had two timeouts at the time. It was about a minute, maybe 59 seconds, at least a minute left on. It was at least 50 seconds left on the clock, and they at least had one timeout. I want to say they had two timeouts, but they at least had one timeout. And all they had to do was get in field goal range, y'all. You got Debo Samuels. You got Debo. And Jimmy G under center. Had Debo crying on the sidelines after the game because he threw the game away. And we knew all the Niners knew and non-Niners fans knew all season long that Jimmy G was going to be a liability at some point. They were going to need a quarterback to get them in field goal, just field goal range. When you got Debo, 
who has proven and said, I will make the catch. I will do what I had to do to get this first day. I will do what I had to freaking do to get a touchdown. I will do what I got to do. You got to do. All you got to do is get the ball Debo. All you have to do is get the ball to Debo. You got a timeout. I want to say they had two, but they had at least one timeout. All you had to do was get in field goal range. You didn't even have to get a touchdown. And you had goal, the kicker, who could kick anything. So you didn't even have to get to the 20-yard line. You just had to get brother man to like the 30. And Jimmy G, y'all, somebody who the Niners and non-Niners fans knew was going to be a liability. That did have me a little bit like, dang, you see what a quarterback would do? So, I'm just saying, like, that did have me changing my perspective a little bit. Now, you don't need a Josh Allen, but you got to have somebody. You got to have somebody consistent and reliable. You don't need a, you didn't need a Josh Allen. Matt Stafford isn't a Josh Allen. But if the roles were reversed, I believe Matt Stafford would at least got them in field goal range. But, y'all, whew, I don't know. The quarterback situation is, is real, y'all. It's, it's freaking real. Um, yeah, so that the end of that game kind of had me like, dang, you do. I mean, of course, I always knew you needed a a trusty, reliable quarterback. But the Rams just had so much talent, and they had Jimmy G, who was just like, just don't do anything stupid. You know what I mean? And he did something stupid. So it's kind of like, I'm like, dang, you really, like, I know you don't need, like, a circus act quarterback, like, but you do need someone who can be consistently and reliable get you downfield with 50 seconds, a timeout, and all you had to do was get in field goal range. That quarterback position, y'all, is very, very much important, y'all. This whole playoff run really woke up my eyes to this quarterback situation in Philly. But I'm going to leave that there. Between Josh Allen's heroics and Jimmy G's <laughs> big no X, I'm really starting to see some G difference. But like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, keep rocking with me, check out my link down below, buy me the coffee, shop the collection, and until I talk to you guys next time, bye!